You are welcome to this lesson of English. My name is Anatoly Karamzi. And today we are going to look at conditional sentences. Conditional sentences, we may ask ourselves what they are. These are sentences which have a condition or what I can call a rule. I know you have rules at home which guide us at home. We have rules at school and we follow those rules whenever we are doing different activities. So likewise today, we are going to share some of the conditions or which you can call the rules in form of a sentence and see how we can form sentences through those rules that we are given at home. For example, I may take a rule of watching a television at home after doing different home chores. You will only be allowed to watch a television when you have done a variety of home chores. I think this is a, rule, a common rule in most families. We don't get up early in the morning and we put on the television and we start watching. There must be conditions that lead us to watching. Meaning that if we watch in a time which we are not supposed to be watching, there is something that happens. And that one is a result. So I want you to look at the conditional sentences and see how we can form them out of the rules or out of the conditions. Relating, relating to our topic debating, we have rules also that govern the debate. So we must follow them to fulfill the best of our debate. So we look at conditional sentences and they are categorized in three. We have if one, if two, and if three. Let's look at if one in general. In if one, we have a condition separate from a result. These two parts of the sentence can be referred to as clauses. Thus, we have an if clause which carries a condition. Then we have a main clause which also has the result. As I told you earlier, that there must be something you must fulfill for another thing to happen. Take an example, watching television after doing home chores. You must first fulfill the activities of cleaning utensils, slashing the compound, even cleaning the compound, then you go and do the watching. So in this case, in this sentence, we have the part which carries a condition and we also have a part that carries a result if that condition is either fulfilled or not fulfilled. When it is not fulfilled, we expect something bad to happen. That means it will be negative sentence, not negative result. And if it is fulfilled, then we expect a positive result. So we have two clauses. The first clause is what we call the if clause, and the second one is called the main clause. The if clause contains the if clause contains the condition and then the main clause contains the result or what will come after. In if one, the condition is always in present simple tense. Thus, verbs add s, es, or ies. Some examples of verbs that add s are those which end in E and those which end in consonants. 
apart from X, S, sound ch and sound s. Those ones add s. Then we have those which add es. And these are verbs that end in o, sound o, sound sh, sound ch, and sound s. Those ones add es. An example, if it is go, we shall say goes. If it is do, this will change to does. Then if it is like fetch, that changes to fetches. If it is preach or teach, that will change to teaches. Then we have those verbs that end in R, whereby R is followed by a consonant. Before R, we have a consonant. For example, carry. We change letter, we change letter Y into I, then we add ES. We can say, if he carries, if he cries, and so on. So in this case, we have our if clause in present simple tense. Our if clause is in present simple tense. Apart from when we use you and we and I, you, we and I, the verb doesn't change. If I go to market, if he, sorry, if you go to the market, if we go to the market, there the verb doesn't change with those pronouns I, we and you. So look at example number one, my getting views. My getting views. I have the hopes of getting the views. If one talks about those possible conditions, it talks about possible conditions. Therefore, my getting views, there is a possibility of getting the views. Indeed, I will be able to get the views. What do you think will happen? The main clause must be in the future tense. The main clause is presented in the future tense. Whereby, we use will and shall to express the possibility of our condition or the possibility of what will come out. What we think may come out as a result we use will and shall to express the possibility of those results. Therefore, we shall use will or I in our main clause. Remember, we have the if clause separated from the main clause with a comma. A comma separates the if clause from the main clause. This is only for when we begin with the condition. This is when we begin with the condition. For example, if I get views, if I get views, then I will debate. If I get views, I will debate. There, we use a comma to separate the if clause from the main clause. Take a look on our example number two. I will raise a point of inquiry if the chairperson allows me. I will raise a point of inquiry if the chairperson allows me. My dear boys and girls, can you identify the difference between this and the other one? Number one and number two, try to find out where the difference is. In this sentence, we began with the condition. Whereas in se second sentence, we have used the condition at the end of the sentence. That means when you observe the two sentences correctly or clearly, you will find that in if in the sentence number one, we used a comma, and in the sentence number two, we did not use the comma. Why? 
When we begin with the main clause, there is no need of using a comma. When you begin with a main clause, no need of using a comma. Therefore, for example number two, I will raise a point of inquiry if the chairperson allows me. There we go straight. We don't pause, we don't put any comma. So take it, note it that when we begin with the main clause, there is no need of using a comma. But when we begin with the if clause, when we begin with the condition, we need to, be, to put a comma after the condition or after the first clause, which is the if clause. Then look at example number three. If I get a chance to talk to the secretary, if I get a chance to talk to the secretary, I will tell her to be more observant. That is, if I get a chance to talk to the secretary, I will tell her to be more observant. You can see in example number three, we separated the two clauses. By the way, to take you back a little bit, do we know what a clause is? A clause is a part of a sentence. A clause is a part of a sentence. Therefore, we separate those two parts. As I have told you, the if part and then the main part. The if clause and the main clause. Therefore, separate them the moment you begin with an if clause. If I get a chance to talk to the secretary, I will tell her to be more observant. We use a comma to separate the two clauses. If I want to begin with the main clause in example number three, I will begin with, I will tell her to be, sorry, I will tell her, this her will be the secretary this time now. I will tell the secretary to be more observant if I get a chance to talk to her. Can we look through it and we reverse it? I will tell her who this her is the secretary. Therefore, I will tell the secretary to be more observant if I get a chance to talk to her. There is need, no need of using a comma when you begin with the main clause. Lastly, to look at an example for we shall attend the debate if it does not rain. We shall attend the debate if it does not rain. For your information, I told you that we use will and shall to express the possibility of the result which we expect to take place after fulfilling the condition. So for now, we shall use the word shall to express our possibility of the rain because we expect rain to take place to, to rain any time but if it doesn't rain well and good we shall debate but if it rains then that means we shall not attend so you see there is a possibility that's why i told you if one always talks about possibilities can we look at number four and we transform it to begin with the if clause, we can say, if it does not rain, if it does not rain, comma, we shall attend the debate. If it does not rain, we shall attend the debate. There we need a comma. A comma is very important when we begin with the if clause. But if we begin with the main clause, as you see here in example number four, there is no need of using a comma. I want to take you through some of the possibilities. You can begin a sentence, and I begin like a sentence, then you complete it for yourself. For example, if I get money, what do you think will happen? 
You have very many ideas in your head triggering if I get money. Mm -hmm. Good. If I get money, I will buy a car. If I get money, I will buy a toy. If I get money, I will go to the supermarket and spend. You see there is a possibility. So in if one, we always talk about possibilities. And we use if to express the condition after we put the result. Thank you very much for observing and learning. We go to our exercise. I am giving you just few numbers, seven numbers. I hope you will think of what you can complete these sentences with. For example, if I became the chairperson, what would, will you do? If I become a chairperson, what will you do? You put yourself in the shoes of the chairperson and see you are now manning the debate. What can you do as a chairperson? Will you be able to control it? Will you be rude? Will you be in control to see that everyone debates and many others? So you think of what you can do. Immediately you become a chairperson and then you complete my sentence. And I leave you with these other numbers. You will take time, read through them, think of what may, the result may be and then complete them successfully. Thank you for being good learners and for being observant in all this lesson since we started. I wish you the best.